and this is first maccabees 3 and verse 48 and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images Kal halal Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rukwa Kadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations of brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson we're carrying on with our words matter. I just, some of these words, the Spirit is just on me, some of these words that we use from time to time, and some of me might. Uh, just assume that people know what they mean so we know how lazy our folk can be so let's go through one or two of them previously we looked at uh, renaissance so we this one here is called iconoclasm and what is it so we're just going to get straight into our definition here there's a long-winded definition but it's quite useful so let's uh, look at what does this word iconoclasm most people know what an icon is what is iconoclasm the act of iconoclasm what is it so the definition the act of breaking or destroying images specifically a general destruction of the images and pictures set up in churches as objects of veneration carried out by the iconoclasts as the people who are doing it and it's got here in the 8th and 9th century uh, protestants um i think i left out that it was with netherlands Protestants and Lenins in the 16th century. So it's the act of destroying all of was the icons that was before you. So the scripture we just read there, let's just go back to that was, uh, where were we? Yes, First Maccabees, which has a lot of the history that's been removed from the Bible because they need to hide all these things so that they could rule. So one of the things they done in verse 48 here of First Maccabees 3, they laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. You see? So they removed the true image, for example, of our power and put themselves and start saying, that they are God, you must worship me. And trying to bully the the people, and they tried. They did it. They beat our religion out of us. They smashed us up. Actually, we're going to read some of that. Let's go first to uh, Ezekiel. There's so many scriptures. I'm not going to get too many of them in this lesson. I'm trying to keep this short. Ezekiel 28. Let's just read verse two. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, modern day prince of Tyrus, it's the Edomites. Babylon the Great, that's their headquarters, America, that's who they are. Thus said the Lord God, Yahweh Power, that's the name of our power, is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son is Yahweh Shai, that's our Savior, Redeemer, High Priest and Mediator in the heaven, is our champion. We're not going to be tired of saying His name. They've given us bywords, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, but we know who we are now. Thus said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said i am god i sit in the seat of the heavenly father in the midst of the seas yet thou art a man and not the most high though thou set thine heart as the most high see that's what this man has done the wind is just getting up here so this word iconoclasm is to do with the defacing destruction of all the images that was before him see in that previous lesson we talk about the renaissance it's on the same kind of line where you're getting power and you you've got to destroy all of what was before you so he got control of everything and immediately set about trying to he smashed up all of the uh, for example the statues the noses that shows the Negroid features, for example. So he claiming that is that the statutes have deteriorated over time, but all aspects of the physic physique of these uh, structures are still intact, apart from the nose and mouth. That's all very strange, because that's what can really identify the fuller lips and the, the 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 nostril area and high cheekbones and all around the mouth area. That's all smashed away. You see. We saw some of that happening around the, the, in the area they call the Middle East during these wars. One of the things that was being destroyed was all of the iconic images that was before them. What's the purpose of all of that? What did that have to do with uh, weapons of mass destruction? Or maybe it's 
weapons of mass deception is probably what we should be speaking of where am i let's get back to the maccabees here because there's so much in so much history in the maccabees it captures the hellenization of the hebrew israelites and this is what confuses these so-called uh, idiotic christians uh, sunday morning this morning so they're all in their idol worship they don't understand the bible and especially with this the the greek captivity removed from their regular bibles so they can't understand it so when you see oh uh, no difference between the greek and the jew they have no idea who these greeks are and it's all very confusing for them it's the same people all hebrew israelites referred to as israelite foreigners let's get first maccabees one but well, let's read verse one to begin with and it happened after Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim and smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. Now, these people are the Edomites, a white man, a devil in the scriptures. He's got it written up in his history books. That This is when he claims that this is when civilization started. Alexander the Great, we call him Alexander the Greek. This is when he took over. So this Greek period here, this captivity, is when they were dominating. And this was their first time in rulership. You see? And this, we're going to jump to verse 9. And after his death, Antiochus, the son of uh, uh, Philip, I mean, uh, Alexander, the son of the Macedonian Philip, and then he died. And after his death, his, um, his servants bear rule one in his place. Verse 9. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves, so did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. You see? And there came out of them a wicked root. <coughs> Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been an hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the 130th and 7th year of the kingdom of the Greeks, who were Edomites. See? This is history. Now for here you need to know a little history so you can understand the mystery of the scriptures. Let's jump to some of this wretched uh, behavior of these people. We're reading this because it, it, it's all, things have been replayed and rehashed. And it's the same people who are doing the same things over and over and over. They're in their lot. Verse 56 of 1 Maccabees 1. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which is the Bible, which they found, they burnt them with fire. You see, they know that they have no part in the kingdom to come. They're going to be slaves. So they, they need to hide all this because they want to, they think they can extend their kingdom. That's what all this iconoclasm was all about and the renaissance from the previous lesson. And wheresoever was found with any, the book of the testament, the Bible, or if any consented to the law, which was never given to them, the king's commandment was what? That they should put him to death. Thus did they by their authority unto the Israelites every month. To as many as were found in the cities. They were just going up and down the place like madmen looking for Hebrew Israelites. Now in the 5 and 20th day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of the Most High. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women. Why? That had caused these their children to be circumcised. What's it got to do with you? This is a private matter. Why is it infuriating you so much that these people are following after their power? Because they are the wicked, the devil in the scriptures, so-called white man. Verse 61, listen to this. And they hanged the infants about their necks. How cruel can you be? and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. That's how infuriated they were that the Hebrew Israelites were following after their God. Howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, they chose rather to die than they, that they might not be defiled with meats and that they might not profane the Holy Covenant. So they died. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. So this is the same people, the iconoclasts, 
back in their lot doing what they've always done. See, he's doing his job. His job is to set uh, uh, traps and snares for the Hebrew Israelites. But we've identified who you are. You see? We know who you are now. We know who we are. We know who our power is. You've got it written in your book. Esau has been laid bare. Let's just read a few. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means. You think Paul didn't know who these people were? For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So we see that around about AD 70. And then it's happened again. It's happening in its fullest now. That the children of Israel we actually forgot who we were. We're beaten out of us. So it happens before and it's happening again now. Only we're waking up now. And who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Heavenly Father, showing himself that he is God. Okay. Let's jump to 8 and 9. And then shall that wicked be revealed. It's been revealed now. We know who you are. You can't get away from your judgment. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The prophecies are going out there. It's biting him. He's sending out all his agents. Because we found out who we are. There's people up and down the place. Preaching and teaching. Pushing out this gospel. This good news. About the kingdom of heaven. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. He's getting ready to push his madness out there is under the skin technology he's getting ready to push it do it do it we can't wait we know we aren't going to be under pressure but we pray to the heavenly father yahweh bashem yahweh shai to be our rock and shield and hiding place revelation 6 Four, and there went out another horse that was red. That's that Edomite, that devil in the scriptures. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That's all his military might. You see? So this is all playing itself out right in front of our faces. This Edomite, he's untouchable with all of his weapons. Read verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And his Habakkuk 2 talks about his death and hell. It's associated with this man. What man? He's calling himself white going around. He's painted over all images. He said, I am God. He said, he's, the, he's the father. You do a Google search. You see, oh, it's him. All this pink flesh. He's got leprosy. No melanin in his skin. Stringy dog-like hair. His pointy nose, he's got no, no rhythm, there's just nothing about this man. He's telling everybody about this blood, this man has got leprosy. You look for who's the son, it's him again. Who are the prophets? It's him, Moses, Elijah, everybody looks like him. The children of the Mosai, they look like him. Everybody is me, me, me. And so you are all savages, and I'm the one who's bringing all this wonderful stuff to the earth that can benefit everyone. But yet, look at the state of the earth. See, it's all telling you exactly who this man is. Death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword. That was his blessing in Genesis 27, 39, 40, somewhere around there. And with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. It's getting ready to turn itself around. Let's wrap up with Revelation 13. Let's go from 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies see that's what this iconoclasm that's what it all is he's put himself up saying oh i am your power i am the heavenly father and the son that's the height of blasphemy of which there's no coming back for there's no repentance and power was given unto him to continue 14 and two months a specific period of time he opened his mouth in blasphemy against the most high to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. This is iconoclasm. You see, he put himself up. Say, it's me, it's me. You've got to worship me. He burned all the images, hidden all the truth in all of his books, and set up all these churches and groves for people to go and worship him. 
and it was given unto him to make war with the saints who are the saints those are hebrew israelites and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man have an ear let him hear this is what is going to happen to this man for all his wickedness he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must he didn't say he might be he didn't say it's going to be a negotiation he said he must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints let's just get one quick one here in the, in revelation 18 let's just go from five for her sins have reached unto heaven and the most high hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled filled to her double you will listen to like a second edition here words matter iconoclasm shalom to the next one